Right guys, so we are back at the same farm, the same spot where I filmed the previous ground squirrel hunting episode. We managed to get a lot last time with my impact and I've come back to the same spot. This is the next day now and I'm seeing a few, a few more heads poking up. So we're gonna head straight out and, and try to get a few more ground squirrels, but we're gonna switch things up a little bit. As I said in the previous episode, I used my impact at 60 foot pounds. Today I'm gonna use the Huben K1 at 80 foot pounds. Um, this is an awesome gun and I've got some new ammo for it, got some new parts for it, which I'll run through later. But in short, it's shooting a lot better than it was when I did my review of the gun um, about a year ago. It's really shooting well. So we're gonna test it out in the field uh, on live targets, the ground scrolls. In fact, I can see a head poking up right there now. So without further ado, let's set up and let's take a few shots. So same as yesterday, uh, we're gonna, gonna do what worked best yesterday and we're basically gonna climb on the back of my truck and get a vantage point on top, which will give us the height we need. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put you like that so you can see exactly what the, the setup process looks like for, for these shots and hopefully you're gonna see um, my reactions and stuff when I take the shots and obviously the scope cam footage will be there on the screen. To add to that, the farmer comes up behind me and begins to feed the Brahmin, so I'm almost certain that we'll be seeing some rock pigeons arriving shortly as well. It's really nice to be able to target two species instead of one, as you just never know what's going to show up. I have a feeling that I'm going to have more luck today with the squirrels though, and after about 15 minutes of scanning around with a rangefinder, I see a head pop up nice and close. A perfect confidence builder to start the day. I'm pretty sure I got him there. It sounded solid. Head went straight down. Solid thud. So, I believe that is my first ground squirrel ever with the Huben K1. And damn, it hits hard. <laughs> That's awesome. Obviously, there's a downside to having so much power in a gun. For one, the cylinder on this K1 is, is tiny. So yes, it, you can pump it up to 300 bar, but that creates its own problems. First of all, you need a cylinder that can go up to 300 bar and stay there, which you know not, not many cylinders can do that. But as I said, you get back from that in, in form factor, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a small compact gun and you can sling it over your shoulder which helps a lot as well. So that's, you know, that's the first thing to mention when comparing the two guns. I think this gun's got a better form factor, but it does come with the drawback of having very few shots per full, especially at these high powers. 80 foot pounds is a lot of energy. So out of curiosity, I'm trying to find the ground squirrel I just shot. I just want to see what that uh, 36 grain slug does to a ground squirrel. And here it is. Let's take a look. So I basically dropped him right where he stood. And um, that's a big male, look at that. That must be the main peanut. So my gear bag for today basically looks like this. I've got um, some of the Nielsen slugs here that I'm gonna be using, 36 grain. I've got my anemometer, although today it's pretty much pointless because firstly, there's no wind. And secondly, I don't have a profile on it for the K1. So it's a bit of a mystery to me. What I have done though, is I have uh, shot it over the lab radar and that tells me two things. It tells me the muzzle velocity and it tells me the ballistic coefficient all the way out to 100 meters. And from that, basically what I've done is I've taken that data and I've made some uh, range uh, stickers here for the turrets of the Aquila Sport Optics scope and that should in theory set me up for taking shots all the way out there to 100 meters plus. Just when I start to worry that nothing's showing up I see a flock of pigeons circling around the area. There are actually quite a lot of birds here and with the feeding troughs in view I decide to change plans a little bit and give the pigeons a go. Change of plan. I'm gonna let the ground squirrels chill out a bit and I'm gonna head down there to where the Brahmins are feeding. I'm seeing pigeons landing there, so I think with a K1 we can sneak in close, rest on a tree or a, an anthill or something and hopefully get a few down. So let's try that out. 
as expected a lone pigeon land shortly afterwards and I'm able to get it down with a decent shot from around 70 meters. Right, so here's our first pigeon for the day. <laughs> Got absolutely smashed by the looks of things. Big hole in the, the crop area there. I'm gonna set this one up as a decoy and I'm gonna backtrack to where I was and, and see if I can get them. But before I do that, I'm just gonna take a walk down to the rest of the Brahmins there because I know there's pigeons down there somewhere and see if I can do a little walk and stalk and get close enough to take a, a close shot. Let's see what we can do. I see another lone pigeon flying around and I'm actually able to follow it and watch it land in the long grass. I can barely see it and it's a really long way off but I can see enough of it to be confident to give it a go. Well, first miss of the day and it would be easy to attribute this to myself or to a miscalculation somewhere but the slow motion tells a better story. The shot was actually pretty close from around 112 meters, a few centimeters lower and I would have hit him but there's a very clear wobble to the slug and from here on out we begin to see some really big issues. The next shot is another miss and again it was very close just passing to the left which could have been wind but I'm not happy with the spiral I'm seeing. It wasn't there when I did my accuracy testing with this exact setup a few days earlier so I'm guessing it's fouling and unfortunately I don't notice it until it's too late. Okay here we go again. Up until now I assume that the misses have all been my fault but I set up on some ground squirrel shortly afterwards and this is where things start to go pear shaped. I'll let this play through and then we'll analyze it afterwards. Well, normally I would be really happy to get two uh, animals down, animals of any kind, but um, I'm not happy with that. You know, our job, even when you're doing pest control on animals that most people don't eat, your job is to put them down cleanly and humanely. And I know this gun has enough power to do it, but the accuracy, unfortunately, today is just not there. I zeroed it at 25 meters this morning, so I know it should be spot on. So either we've got a case a case of a, a slug veering from one side to another um for whatever reason whether it's something to do with the barrel or whether it's something to do with the conditions or i don't know something something's just not right the accuracy isn't there i have a feeling that the barrel's got fouling in it and unfortunately there's nothing that can be done about that in the human be, human aside from shooting felt pellets because unfortunately yeah there's just no ways you can put a cleaning rod in there so I think I'm going to switch back to the FX. Um, FX doesn't have as much power, but it's got it's more accurate, and that's more important to me. So I'm going to switch back, and let's see if we can get some more with that gun. Two more ground squirrels down. Look, I'm a bit bummed that uh, the gun's not shooting like I hoped it would. I really don't think it's a trajectory validation issue because it looked to me as if the shots were hitting left or right. It wasn't an up or down problem. At least that's what it looked like to me. I suppose we'll see better on the scope cam footage. But either way, if you you know if you don't know what your gun's doing, you shouldn't be shooting with it. So that's my mistake. I'm gonna switch back to the impact and that gun I know like the back of my hand and I know that barrel's spot on. So we've got the two ground scrolls happy with that, but let's move on to a gun that I'm more comfortable with. My first few shots with the impact actually don't go much better and it's a little frustrating at first. It turns out that the gun was a little bit out from being bumped around in the truck and the first shot misses just to the right but I realize this very quickly and I hold accordingly and it's spot on. You can imagine I was very confused when after checking zero again I missed the very next shot but the slow-mo reveals a twig that just got in the way and must have deflected the slug. It's a long wait before the next opportunity, a long and frustrating wait considering the way that the morning's gone so far, but I'm determined to make it right and when I finally get an opportunity from about 70 meters, I make it count. Well, 
took long enough, didn't it? it? Took about an hour and a half. I've been waiting here. It's been pretty boring. One popped its head up pretty much in the same spot that I shot those those two earlier with the, the Huban one after another. Except this time the slug went exactly where I wanted it, straight through the head and he's down on the spot. I ranged it with the Sig Sauer Kilo rangefinder. The Kestrel basically told me exactly what I needed to uh, what I needed to dial. And then I dialed in the scope turret to exactly 69 meters. And then down there, I think in that hole was where the squirrel went down. The wind starts to pick up quite a bit as you can see in this next clip. So I hold accordingly for the shot and he goes down. Funnily enough though, I actually didn't hold enough and the slug ricochets off the twig to his right and straight into him. I guess ricochets aren't always a bad thing. This next one's nice and close and I make no mistake, straight through the head. And a squirrel kebab, just for good measure. Look, I know it's been a little bit frustrating today with the, the Huban K1. I know that, you know, it looks bad when I put it away and decide to take out a, another gun that I feel more comfortable with. But I still think the, the K1 is a good gun. Um, there are a couple of weaknesses. One of them is, a very clear weakness is the fact that it cannot be decocked. It's constantly cocked and the only thing stopping it from firing on semi-auto is a little safety switch. And that to me is completely unacceptable. Um, I don't think it's safe at all and the reason why I'm hunting out here with this gun and I'm not choosing to hunt in any kind of different location with the K1 is purely and simply because when I'm out here by myself there's a lot less risk of things going south and, and someone getting shot. I know that as long as I point the barrel away from me I'm going to be safe. If I use the K1 in you know hunting with friends or hunting with a cameraman I would not feel safe. So that's just a warning out there. Don't get that gun if you feel like there's any risk of someone um, someone in your vicinity being around you because it's just an accident waiting to happen. So the warning comes with the, the praise I have for the gun. The praise I have for the gun is that the valving system in there is absolutely genius. It's excellent. I think it's the future. Um, and I think, you know, the fact that you can have a, a hammerless gun that, that gets so much power with so little recoil is really amazing. Um, another weakness, I think, I think the fact the biggest weakness of the gun is probably the barrel at this stage. It's very fussy with what it likes to shoot. It only shoots the, the 36 grain Nielsen ammo and some hard cast ammo that um, Gregor from Slovenia made for me. It doesn't like to shoot anything else. And the barrel fouls up really quickly. It's a 12 groove Lothar Walther. Um, and 12 groove Lothar Walthers are known for fouling up really badly. So if I was a Huban, I would put another barrel in. I think that would solve a lot of issues. Um, I think if they sorted that out, I'd be much more likely to use it. Um, they have upgraded the gun quite a lot since I reviewed it. They've changed the regulator, which makes it way more consistent. Uh, they've added a pressure gauge at the full probe area in the front. So you can actually see what the full pressure is. And that's immensely helpful. And they seem to have fixed their issues with the leaks. I would recommend it more now than when I first reviewed it. But there's some big issues that need to be sorted out. And that's why I'm using this gun. Now you're going to have a good laugh here, but I line up on a ground squirrel here and another one runs past as I squeeze the trigger and takes a bullet for him. I honestly didn't see it through the scope, I just saw the dust behind him and I actually thought the shot had hit really high for some reason, so I hold low for the next shot and I obviously miss entirely. Here's the second squirrel coming in and this slug would have drilled the one I was aiming for, but it just skims off the other one's tail and gets deflected high. I hold low for the next shot and miss. And by the way, that's a mongoose in the background. A very confused mongoose.
and he's done. So it looked like the wind took that one a little bit, maybe a little bit to the right. I'm not 100% sure, we'll have to see in the slow-mo. Um, I actually decided to go for a heart and lung shot there. Look, not as instant as a headshot, but that thing only ran about five or six meters and then keeled straight over and I saw the, I saw the blood pumping out of him. So the heart and lung shot works. But um, yeah, I think we'll stick to the headshots from now on. Now we're finally getting somewhere. Patience is paying off, but I've got one more plan up my sleeve. So we've moved on to a slightly different spot now. Um, I think the first spot we were at um, is pretty much dried up. I think all the, the ground schools there have realized that there's danger at hand and they don't want to come out. So you may recognize this, you may not. This is the, uh, the place where I filmed the Pigeon Paradise series in 2014. Um, I was sitting there on the dam wall, that very green grassy section over there, and I was shooting onto this roof and I was shooting into those trees over there. But on the back here, we've got a whole lot of uh, ground squirrel colonies. So the idea now is to just wait over here, set up and hope that they'll come out and pop their heads up and give us a shot. We'll see how it goes. Weather's perfect, there's not much wind over here. It's very sheltered in this, this part of the farm. So hopefully we can get some down. I saw quite a few holes at the bottom near one of the pastures. My guess is that they want to be close to the green stuff. So I set up shop and I wait for the squirrels to appear. I put a little steel spinner out at around 90 meters just to check my trajectory once again. And it's spot on, which is always good for building confidence before a shot. And when a squirrel does show itself, I'm ready for him. I'm a bit shaky on this shot, but I squeeze the trigger at the right time and I send him tumbling. Squirrels seem to show up in bursts and this one was taken straight afterwards with a glancing head shot. It barely nicks the head. I should have actually held under a bit for this one because it was about 35 meters away, but it does enough to finish him cleanly. And the last squirrel of the day, this was a solid body shot, quartering away and he didn't stand a chance. My last shot of the day was at a pigeon, 170 yards away, and I would have absolutely smashed this bird's center of mass if it wasn't for the branch in his way. Well, I tried my luck there. 156 meters in a tree all the way down there. I think I hit the branch just in front of him. I couldn't wait for him to move. Didn't work out. That's hunting. I'll try again next time. Well guys, that's a wrap on day two of our little ground squirrel adventure here in the Karoo. It's been a fantastic day. We started with the Huben K1. I don't have much experience actually hunting with this gun, so I hadn't, ha I hadn't got the trajectory completely figured out yet. And we had quite a few misses and that may be due to the fact that um, I don't know the gun well, or it may be an accuracy issue. We'll only know when I look at the, at the scope cam footage when I get home. But just being a little bit uncomfortable with the setup, I then switched over to my impact, which worked really well yesterday. And we got the rest of these with the impact. So three with the K1 and a few more with the impact. Um, but again, a really good day of pest control. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't done that yet. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of my uploads. We've got some really cool stuff coming. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. If you would like to see the extended version of this video and other extra content like old uploads that YouTube took down or early releases of upcoming episodes, head over to airgun101.com. You'll be able to find many other airgun content creators on the site and a safe place where we can build a community and help each other out. It's a real practical way of supporting content creators like myself without paying a cent as the sponsors of the website help contribute towards the running costs of my channel. Alternatively, you can find me on other social media platforms on my vlog channel and on Patreon. Thank you so much for the support and I'll see you on the next one.